I'm on to water because it's five o'clock at night and that's my cutoff for coffee. Guys, if you're new around here, let me introduce myself to you. My name's Tammy. I own a small bath and body company here in Greencastle, Indiana. I've been in business for seven years and this channel for over two now. I'm going to try to make this not be a rant and not offend too many people. <laughs> I have a feeling I could probably offend people with this little bit of a mini rant, maybe. <laughs> Branding. It's kind of cliched. You know, everybody talks about branding and it's, I mean, I've done it. I've, I've mentioned in my videos about how I need to follow my branding. Even worse than that is ideal customer. And so I just want to have a bit of a mini rant with you guys and let you know why I actually do think these are important topics, but I hate it when people talk about them. <laughs> if you're interested in that, stay tuned. <laughs> so branding. All right, guys, I've been in business for seven years, right? Almost seven years. Like, and through those years, I have really, really have tried to improve my business. I would sign up for these free like little seminars or whatever that you all about branding and how to how to get your brand. And I think I've even paid for some of those things. You know, you get a little snippet and it's like, oh, if you, you know, pay by the by, you know, tomorrow you'll get all of this for another $200, <laughs> you know, and we'll teach you how to do this or that. You know what I'm trying to say? Those, those like little things, I've done it. One thing that kind of bothers me is this feeling that they give, well, what does your business stand for? Well, what is, selling soaps. I honestly, that's what I said. I, I want to sell soap. What, what, what is uh, your mission statement? What is your, you know, uh, whatever. I, I can't think of the words I'm trying to think of, but it's like, it's like this pressure to have some deeper meaning behind your business. You know, I am not sending a bar of soap to Haiti for every bar of soap that's sold. I love making pretty soap. I love to share that love with other people and I love to to sell it and I, I love to just bring people into my love for this and that is good enough and so when people start saying well what's your mission statement or what does your brand you know stand for it makes it feel like you're not being everything you should be in your business because maybe you just like to knit socks and that's all you care about. So you sell knit, knitted socks. That's okay. You don't have to have some deep meaning and deep purpose for having a business. And so one of the things that really gets me is this, almost this pressure from some of these gurus or business coaches that tell you that you um, kind of infer that you should have like purposeful mission statements or yeah, I don't buy that. I don't, and I think most small businesses aren't that. You know, some are, and I think it's wonderful when you are, but I don't feel like it's necessary to be a good, hardworking business owner to have some sort of like deeper meaning. Another thing that kind of bothers me is like these these business coaches or gurus that try to help you come up with your brand identity. And it's like you answer like these questions, like if your business was uh, a person, where would they like to go on vacation? You have a picture of New York, you have a picture of Paris, you might have a picture of the mountains with this hiker in the foreground, you might have a picture of somebody sitting on the beach on the watching the waves reading. I mean, you have all these pictures to choose from and I'm thinking, well, none. <laughs> Between the two that speak to me the most would be the mountains, but I sure as heck am not going to be hiking. <laughs> put put the lady in the in the like little lawn chair thingy in the mountains, take her out of the beach and put her in the mountains. And that's me. <laughs> and me is my business, right? My business is me. So these are personal questions, but I'm not going to sit on the beach that I'm sorry, that bores the crap out of me. I can, I'll give you two hours and I'm bored. 
two hours tops and I'm bored. So <laughs> put me in the mountains and I'm not bored. It's just, but I'm not going to hike. So it's just, what's your, if your business was a person, what would there be their favorite meal? Uh, depends on how the day of the week. Pizza one day, steak the next. I I don't know. And maybe I'm just being a little flippant or, or you know, whatever. But it just irks me. <laughs> this is meaningless to me. Meaningless. And at the end of this, all these questions, I feel like I have some sort of personality disorder because none of it makes sense. Because none of my answers are in line with what the algorithm of that quiz is. You know, it's like the Hogwarts quiz where you answer all these questions and it tells you what house you're supposed to be in. It's meaningless to me. So that's branding. And it just, it's just a little, I find that people can be a little condescending. I don't like to be condescended to. <laughs> I don't know how I work with doctors. <laughs> but I do believe that branding is important. And so here's my thought on branding and why it's important. It is important for somebody to look at something, whether it's a picture of your products, whether it is uh, just an image that you post on social media. You want somebody to recognize that that is your product without them having to think about it. I follow Mandy at Sweet Home Soaps on Instagram and I can tell you that 90% of the time, I know that that is her photo without looking at who posted that photo. So that's where branding is important. You want your fonts to be the same. You want your labels to be the same. And you want that branding and those labels to represent who you are as a business, right? So it, it, you guys that, that have been around here, you know that my labels have color. I have a lot of color in my labels. I like that. I tried at one point by the urging of my husband to do a very more organic label with no color and it was either brown and white or black and white and there wasn't any kind of frills to it. It was very bare bones. I did that for about two months and I hated every single label. I, it's not me. It's someone else but it wasn't me. So I went back to my colors and I've been happy ever since. <laughs> so that's where branding comes in. I want somebody to immediately know that that is my product just by a glance. They don't have to see my name to know it. They just know it from my labels being consistent across the board. My fonts are all the same across the board. All of my uh, social media, all of my um, imagery, is the same and that's where branding comes in. You want your colors to be consistent, your fonts to be consistent, and the vibe to be consistent across the board. Whether it's a bath bomb or a soap or if you're not a bath and body maker, maybe it's your knitted scarves and your knitted hats. The labeling and the little tags should be very consistent. Uh, so that's where branding comes in and I do think that is important. All right. Ideal customer. I, this is worse than branding for me. <laughs> this is worse than branding. I, who is my ideal customer? Anyone that buys my soap is my ideal customer. <laughs> I cannot say that my ideal customer is a 42 year old mother of three that's a paralegal through the day and likes kickboxing in the weekends or what have you, likes this kind of music and, and drives this kind of car. This is, this is so arbitrary. And you can't tell me Kleenex has an ideal customer. Their ideal customer is anyone with a runny nose. Coke, do they have an ideal customer? No, it's anybody that likes Coke. <laughs> I think it's so pretentious to talk about ideal customers. I was literally watching a YouTube channel. Guys, I'm not gonna give names or anything, but I watched this lady that is kind of a Shopify expert. Well, she's branched out and has become more of a, 
of a well-rounded business advisor as well, business advice or whatever. And she was talking about ideal customers. And she goes, what are their hopes and dreams? What are their favorite music? I'm sorry, I couldn't watch anymore. That was ridiculous. I have five-year-olds to 80-year-olds buying my product. There is no way I have an ideal customer that I can know who their hopes and dreams are. I don't care what their favorite music is. I don't care what their hopes and dreams are. I'm sorry. They're just, it's so, it's not like, I, I, I don't know. I just think that it is just so ridiculous to try to come up with this and, and answer these questions. I'm sorry, I just do. And that's my little rant for the day. But <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to offend people. But <laughs> I'm also trying, I'm, I'm usually brutally honest too. <laughs> Sometimes to my detriment. <laughs> Having a customer base and knowing your customer base, that's important. So I'm going to give you some personal experience with this. I make soapy cupcakes with a little frosting and a little gumball on top, and they're so cute. And who doesn't like a soapy cupcake? My customers. They don't like them. They don't sell. <laughs> I make them, and they don't sell. Okay. So my customer base doesn't like soapy cupcakes. Does that mean that I would never, they never ever sell? No, they'll eventually sell. But my base, they don't buy that. All right, so does that mean I never make soapy cupcakes? Heck no, I'm still gonna make soapy cupcakes. They're cute and I liked making them. I think it's so much fun to make them. But because I know that my customer base doesn't really purchase them, I know that when I make them, I'm only gonna make a small amount and I know that they're gonna sit on my shelf for a while before they sell. This is just something I know. You know, I'm not gonna make 50 cupcakes. I'm only gonna make 12. And I'm not gonna make them every two weeks. I'm gonna make them every couple years. That's where knowing your customer base gets you. And it's not something you need to know from day one. It is something that you have to learn. There's no way you know that from anywhere near the first year. You really, it's all trial and error. And so knowing that can help you plan what you do and what you don't do. I like to think of it as a lane. You know, I have I have a lane that I'm in. And um, I talked to, to you guys about this about within my candle making video where someone had uh, recommended a gorgeous candle jar and she recommended the, the wick and the wax and she, she did give me these recommendations. But I know my lane and that candle jar was way on the other side of this lane. Well, I mean, it was like high end guys, high, high, high end. <laughs> I would have to charge 30 or $40 for this candle. I don't know what I would have to charge actually, but still well outside of my lane. The most expensive item I have on my shelf is $25. It's a face cream. If I'm looking at this middle lane, I'm in the middle and $25 is on the higher end or the highest end. My lowest item that I have is two for five bath bomb surprises right here. My $25 cream, I know that my packaging has to be within that $25 realm. I'm not gonna put this wonderful cream in a, in a jar that costs me $10 because then my price point is way too high for that cream. And my customers would not probably buy that. <laughs> I mean, they're not gonna buy a $35 or $40 cream from me. Now some brands, $25 face cream is on their lower end. But you have to, you have to walk the line. And I think you should have to, toe outside of that line as well. So most of my products are in the seven to $15 range. That's most of my products are right in that range. So having a $25 cream is, is really towing the line over to where I'm outside of this lane. And with the two for five bath bomb surprises, it's towing the line of being outside 
on the lower end of my rain, lane. I think that's smart. I think it's smart to have your bulk of your prices in, in this dead center of a lane and then toe the line on the other two sides and that keeps you well-rounded and gives you different price points throughout your product line. And I am I see nothing wrong with that. And I'm very happy that I have those products to do that. And they're still in my branding and my branding is still consistent across those two products on either side of my, on the lane. So it's just that whole, that whole coming together, knowing your lane, knowing your customer base and what the base, which is like 75% of your customers, what are they willing to spend or willing to buy or wanting to buy from you? And I think that's a heck of a lot more important than trying to figure out this arbitrary ideal customer. I'm sorry, I just do. And that's my two cents on that. I have another video coming up and that video is going to share my new branding and where I'm taking my color schemes and my fonts and how I'm going to uh, update those. I'm dropping my pink. I'm, I'm trying to make all of my branding across the board to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, it bothers me that I don't know what fonts were used when she created that logo and I can't recreate those in my labels. So it's just one of those things that I want to, I want to iron out. I'm also going to be talking about a new website design that I'm going to be doing next year. So I'm going to share my website redesign and uh, my room, which is going to match my branding. So guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your, I'm, I'm really interested in your comments. I really don't want to like make people mad and step on toes, but I really feel like there's a lot of pressure on new businesses to have all this figured out from the get-go or pay somebody to tell you how to figure this out from the get-go. I really think you need to be in business for at least a year before you start worrying about uh, finding that lane that you're in, find what's comfortable for you. It's going to change. Your branding will change. I, Coke still updates their brands, right? They still make changes to their branding. They, they don't look the same they did 30 years ago. My branding and my fonts and my labeling and all of that has changed so many times over the last seven years. And I finally have landed on a, on a, on a look that I'm very happy with. But it took me about four or five years to get to the point where I was really, really happy with my my branding and my labels and my vibe of where I was. So don't feel like you have to have it all figured out from day one because you won't. And if you do, you'll change it in a year anyway. So enjoy the ride, but you don't have to stress over it. And I just wanted to share that with you. Don't stress over it. So guys, if you want to see a video on how my business got started, I'll link that right here for you and you can check that out. And then uh, maybe I'll see you in the next video. Bye.